What we created here may be unique in all of human existence. We created a paradise. Ben is the father of six children. They live deep in the forest. The youngest ones have never even hardly been out of the forest at all. Close on one week, please. The genesis of it was me being a father, grappling with my own questions of what kind of parent are you going to be and how are you going to be a parent in the contemporary United States today. We tried to bring the kids up in a state of constant self-examination and self-improvement, physically, mentally, in all ways, really. Vigo was deeply knowledgeable about living in harmony with the natural environment. I used to live in northern Idaho. That's where I did my preparation just before coming. It helped me to be there two weeks before, making sure I felt like it was real. Lighting the fires, or cooking, or gardening, all the things that they did was realistic. Why does mommy have to be gone so long? Mom needs to be in the hospital right now. At the heart of the story of, of Captain Fantastic is Ben's wife passes away. Her parents feel that I'm partly to blame. This is your fault. Leslie had a disease. Wherever you are, stay there. You show up, I will have you arrested. We can't go to Mommy's funeral. We want to see Mom. Grandpa can't oppress us. We leave our little piece of paradise in the middle of the forest to go to her funeral. And on that road trip, our way of living comes into conflict with so-called civilized society. What's wrong with everyone? Are they sick? What do you mean? Everyone's so fat. Fat like hippos. The movie becomes really about a journey of discovery. It's an awakening of sorts. The culture clash between my sister's family. You know, their kids are very different than my kids. Jackson, you're not at the table. All right. It's all local and organic. How did you kill those chickens? With an ax or a knife? <laughs> I, they're, it's a rotisserie chicken, so you buy it. On, it's already dead. That's sort of a warm up for what comes later, which is when we get to the grandparents. That almost hit me. If I wanted to hit you, I would have hit you. Vigo isn't a hero, and I'm not a villain. We're both complicated men trying to work out our differences in how to raise the children. Even if they make it through whatever it is you're doing to them, they're going to be totally unprepared for the real world. And I happen to think the opposite is true. Living in this very extreme way, which is certainly not common in our culture, will probably bring up is what he's doing insane or insanely great. I'm gonna live here with Nana and Grandpa. That's not possible. Come on, get your stuff, let's go. Let's go! I hate you! It's really a film about the conflict of that. How much of the world do you let in and how much of the world do you keep away? It's about parenting and the choices we make as parents. Specifically, fatherhood. The six kids playing my children, not only how talented they are as actors, but how hard they work to prepare. And we've approached all the days of the shoot together as a family. This film feels to me like it could be really a special movie. And it, it makes for a lot of you know, thought-provoking moments, humorous moments. <laughs> I sincerely hope you haven't been doing what I think you've been doing. Your daughter has taught me many things just now. Will you be my wife? <laughs> <laughs> First time I read the script, I remember laughing as much as I cried reading it. And I hope that that's what audiences' reaction will be when they see the finished movie.